Hello, welcome to the fifth part of my common list programming language tutorials. My name is Will, and uh, this is going to be a, conti a direct continuation of our of part four, uh, where I'm just going to be defining a couple of list uh, list functions that'll uh, just get us a little more acquainted with lists because I think their manipulation manipulation is very important. Uh, so let's go. First off, I need to go ahead and rename this file into tutorial 5. Even though most of these files end up empty anyway. So, uh, that's our nice little sum function. For most list functions, it's going to be very similar. We're going to have either a null case, where we give kind of like a base value, or we're going to have a, you know, one, one element and then possibly more. So let's write a function called length. Actually, Lisp, Lisp already has a function called length. So what we're going to have to do is uh, just uh, call it something else. I'm going to do as my professor used to do and just add an M in front of it. That stands for my length of a list. So very similar if we have a null list. The length is, by all technicalities, just zero. Uh, but if instead we have at least one element, then we can go ahead and just add one, right? Just the the because we can we can definitely count one element, but we can't say anything about the rest of the list. So what we're going to go ahead and do is add one, and then take the length of the rest of the list, which is by using cooter. Alternatively, what you could have done was just define, uh, you could have done this. And probably a bit of more efficient solution as well. <clears throat> but nonetheless, I'm trying to show uh, you know, getting you comfortable with uh, recursive relations like it, like these. All right. Uh, other quick function. Print list to print a list. Um, then we have nothing pr to print in this case. So, what we're going to do is not. So if the list is not null, by all technicalities, you could have just put if list, because if list were null, it would be nil, in which case this would not be true. Uh, so it's the same thing, but just because we're trying to, but but when you use it this way, you're trying to use list as a Boolean value. And so, while it's right in terms of data types, it's wrong in terms of syntactically when you're thinking about the program. In most cases I would I would be fine in just writing this, but here just to emphasize that we're using nil as an empty list, what I'm going to do is take this approach instead. So if it's not null, then what we're going to go ahead and do is just print the current element. And then we want to go ahead and print list on the rest of the elements, right? But oh no! If we put this here, what it's going to be is this is going to be the else expression. So what we're going to use here is a new special, special operator, which is progn. Progn is essentially opening up a, a block, you know, like it, like the curly braces in C. Um, the other approach is to use let and then give it no arguments, you know, no variables. Uh, but uh, Progn is much better in this case because we, we don't need any variables, so why use let? All right. So that, that'll take care of that because this entire thing is considered the 
consequent, so that'll only happen when this is true. <clears throat> All right, let's see another one. So how about we revise that sum function we had from before? Let's go ahead and get that from. Uh, since I renamed it, it actually deleted the old the old one. But oh well. Defun uh, sum right. So let's call it sum numbers. So in this case, we cannot assume that the list contains only numbers. It may contain. Um, so in this case, it may contain either numbers, it can contain symbols, or it'll contain lists. So what we're going to want to do with this function, this is going to be considerably more um, difficult, kind of, is we're, we want to go through any list and we want to find every single number in it. So we could have a crazy list such as you know, a bunch of lists and 0, 5, x, then we have uh, o, 1, then a, then we can have 0, 1, uh, 0, 2, 3, we can have a list, list like this where the first element is this list right here and the second element is 0 and this and what we want to do is grab this grab this zero let's make it a one so it's important let's make this a seven so grab this one add it to the five add it to the one add it to the seven add it to the two add it to the three so since this is a bit complicated we're going to have a lot of if else's i'm going to show you a quick macro called cond and it's essentially like an if uh, an if you know an if operator however what it's going to do is it's going to accept multiple conditions and then multiple consequence so this is how we would write so if we were just doing the normal sum we would write it as if null list here then what we want to do is zero return zero so notice that we have a list that is the condition and then the return so similarly we're gonna have a condition here and in this case since in order to, to do an else in a cond what you do is type T or just something that is always true so in this case we want to do the plus get the sum of the cooter list. When we get into grammars, I can more spe more specifically specify how the grammar of con set up. But it'll take a, for now, just uh, be content in knowing that it'll take a list of pairs. And not necessarily, but uh, let's keep it simple. A list of pairs where the first element is the condition that we're testing, and then we have the consequent. Same here, condition, consequent. All right, so let's actually keep that there because that'll be good for some, for some lists or some numbers. So as before, if we have a, an empty list, we just return zero. Now, if we actually do have something in the list, that doesn't mean that that something is a number. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to say if what we have in the list currently, so the current element of the list, not EQ, number P, this stands for number predicate. It's going to return true if it's a number, false otherwise. So this is exactly what we want. So if it's a number, this is actually what we want to do. Right? Then we can say 
if it's instead a symbol, so if symbol P, then we just want to return the sum of the rest of it. Now if it what oops if it was not a number and if it's not a symbol, what I said was that it's either uh, it's either a number, it's a symbol, or it's a list. So what we can do here is we can either say, you know, test it for it being a list by using list p. However, since we know that that's the only other case as far as what I specified it to be, we can just use t as, a, as an else. And similarly to what I do in C, I would write something like this. Just to say what that stands for. All right, so uh, in this case, what we want to do is we want to add the sum of that that sublist with the sum of the rest of the list. And this, it's very. I think it's very important for you to understand this example because if you can understand this, you can do many other um, list operations, no matter how complicated the, the list is. So let's go ahead and toss that into the REPL. So you, you, know, you can get a little more assurance that it does work. And the reason I deleted that comment was that uh, for some reason when I copy paste here and there's a comment present, that, that is specifically on, on Windows. Uh, when there's a comment present, it will take up some of the uh, like the other forms. So let's just make sure that. Okay, what's happening here is that we don't have a function called sum; it's sum numbers. Am I still calling? Yeah, right here. I'm sorry about that. All right, just a stall warning saying that we're redefining it. All right, so if we have some numbers, so let's give it that list that we had here. The result of this should be <coughs> 6, 7, 14, 16, and then 19. Go ahead and quote that. So you can copy paste it. And there we go, 19. Now, uh, when you're testing out some code, a very useful feature of the REPL <coughs> is uh, it's not really a, a special operator, but it acts like one. I think it's actually defined as a macro. But, uh, one second, sorry. Oh, a phone call. So uh, trace allows you to examine what a function takes in and what it returns. And what it does is it takes in the name of the function. So here, trace numbers, some numbers. So we, what we can do is when we call it, it's going to generate a nice little stack and indent it a little bit, <coughs> saying that here we called some numbers with these arguments, and then it was called with these arguments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When it gets into the bottom level, when it actually returns, it specifies that here it's returning zero with the argument nil, and here it returned zero because it only had x in it. X isn't a number, and so you can kind of trace through what the function took in and returned. This is going to be a bit of a short, oh wow, actually 14 minutes, never mind. It's a good thing I checked. All right, so I'm going to cut it here. Uh, catch you later.